Happy, happy Friday morning to you. This is Brad Schmidt, host of the K High Morning News Show on the Voice of the Foothills, AM 950. It is 845. And as promised, I get to introduce Mr. Dave Naves, who is the host of the segment Web in Plain English. And we will be discussing Google calendars today. So, uh, Dave, I'm very interested in this topic. So uh, what what are we going to dive into first? Good morning, Brad. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Google calendars. Yes. Well, as you said, my name is Dave Naves. My company is Dave Works Web Development. For those of you who um, I don't know, I'm a total web nerd, and I have been for the past 22 years. Uh, I helped develop sites like Ticketmaster and Disney Channel and Guests and City Search and blah, blah, blah. Now I focus on small business. I am very interested in helping small business embrace the web in a way that helps them make their businesses more efficient and ultimately helps them make more money because small business America is still the backbone of our economy. So, as uh, the past few weeks, we have discussed Amazon and how it can help you. Now I'm going to switch back to one of my favorite subjects, which is Google. Most specifically, I want to talk about Google Calendar. And I know many of you do already use Google Calendar, but you probably don't use Google Calendar to its full potential. So I want to talk about advanced methods, among other things, advanced tools and methods and tips and tricks and all that kind of stuff. So for those of you who don't use Google Calendar, I would say that you might want to keep an open mind and try it. So as I typically do, I'm going to discuss, uh, break the the show down into three simple segments, which is what is it, why to use it, and then how to use it. So what is Google Calendar? Google Calendar is a free, awesome, brilliant calendaring system given to us by our friends at Google. It comes, if you simply sign up for a free Google account, uh, Google, among many other tools uh, that become available, will also give you a calendar. It is, like you would think it is, a, a calendar to manage your, your, your schedule. But it's so much more than that. It completely integrates with all of the other tools, or I should say most of the other tools that Google offers. So if you have Gmail you use tasks if you use google voice if you use google drive all of these things are completely uh, synced together so let me talk about um get, getting yourself an account you know how do you get a google account if you don't already have a, a gmail account whatever you go to google.com up in the top right it says create an account you walk through the process and then once you have – you fill it out and everything you need to fill out. I won't go into that in great detail. But you will see a series of squares, teeny squares at the top right of your screen. One of those, you click on that and you will be delivered a sub-menu of many tools, including calendar. So you click on calendar and you would see the calendar. You can just immediately – the interface is so darn easy to use, you just start clicking and adding events. But what, the stuff you, you might not know um, – is how shareable these calendars are. You can create as many different calendars as you'd like. So if you've got a business, you can create a business calendar. If you've got a personal, you can create a personal calendar. You have a band, you can have a band calendar. They can be private, they can be public. You can post these calendars on your website. Very easily done so that you can have Say, you know, say say for community-based stuff. I do a lot of community-based stuff here in Auburn, California. You can create an Auburn ca- calendar and embed it on as many different websites as you'd like and have as many different people manage it as you'd like. So everybody can add to the kitty, if you will. Like a so, community calendar exactly in some right. situations. Exactly right. So that, I mean, and that's free. It, it's, you know, is it is it everything, you know, that everybody wants in a calendar? I don't know. For me, it is. It does everything I want to, that I want to do. Here's a perfect example of uh, one of the very things I do on a daily basis uh, using Google Calendar. I take a step back for a second. I get, I get way too, too many emails during the day, I, literally 23, 2,400 emails a day. It's crazy. Much of it is spam. Luckily, Gmail filters out most of it. But you know, some of these emails that I get, it gets overwhelming because we've got a lot of customers and a lot of, you know, just a lot of email influx. So one of the things you can do is, say, click on an email and immediately take that email and um, there's click on more and it will say create event. And it will take your email 
and it will create a calendar event of that email. It will take everything in that email and pop it in there, including adding the sender to the calendar. And if you want to keep them in there, you can save it as a calendar event and say somebody says, Dave, I need to meet with you on blah, 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 Dave, or about this. So instead of having to go and spend an extra 30 seconds, I can merely take the email, create an event, pop it in the calendar, and the calendar will prompt me with, do you want to send an invitation? And immediately we can just create an event uh, for a meeting for the future. And it would take literally seconds rather than even 30 seconds or a minute to try to go to calendar, you know, create a new event. What's the person's email? Copy and paste it over, you know, blah, 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 blah. So that, that is just one of the many things that can be done within Google Calendar. It's just they've really, over the years, taken their time and listened to tons of feedback by their users and made it so incredibly efficient and just pragmatic. I'm a very pragmatic person, and I just like stuff that works. We use it here at, at uh, K-High, and my favorite part about it's very cool how you do the uh, email part, but I like how then after you – if to uh, the Gmail to the calendar, and then you can uh, color code it after that to, to uh, uh, better organize them, and I love that fact of it. Absolutely. In fact, that's one of the. Th- that's a great point. One of the things that I wanted to talk about were was um, many people don't know about. I'll just jump right into it. Google Labs. Google Labs is an experimental feature on many of their uh, products where they allow third party developers to develop add ons for their products. So Google Calendar has tons of add ons, including. Um, coloring and designing of calendars. So one of the things I do, I, I, I can't even remember exactly what it is, but it's you just look up something. Go to you click, there's a little sub menu up in Calendar, and most of their products called Labs. It's a little tab. Click on it and see what other people have developed. But on the background of every one of my calendars is my company logo, and it's kind of cool. So when people come to look at my calendars, right, it's got da- my Dave Works logo embedded in the background and a faint background. It looks it looks kind of cool. So uh, lots of opportunities to design for better organization, but also for branding. You know, it gives gives you free branding on your calendars. So when when you say people would look at your calendars, does that mean it's public, like a Facebook account kind of thing? Yes. Obviously not like Facebook, but it's it's public. Absolutely. It can be. It It can be. Yes, it can be. You can can make it public. Like for your business, that would be a good thing, right? You would want your business to be public. It depends. That's okay. a great question because um, one of, as I was researching for today's show, one of the things you have to be careful with public calendars is calendars aren't immune to spam. Spammers have found a way to spam your calendars. So there are ways to combat that. But, um, yes, you can have public calendars, absolutely. And, it, and it, it is in some cases it's worth it. So I've got multiple calendars for my business. Right? I've got multiple calendars for personal. Um, but it's all from one single – user interface which is very handy i don't have to log in separately and try to figure out you know who why what where how um it's so that that was just a a little branding piece in there but so really check out labs when you go in there if you don't you know remember anything just go to google check out google you know do a google search for calendar labs and you'll find just tons of resources out there for you um so I can walk through kind of the basics, you know, like most calendars you've got, you know, you have a mini calendar in it where you can see a brief view of, of the calendar itself that will highlight the dates that you actually have events. You can move that forward, backward. You can click on the, the date itself and it will show you details. You can continually edit um, each event if you want. You can delete an event. You can invite others. You can, you know, uninvite and others. Reminders, which reminders. is a huge thing for me. Absolutely. Because w- anything over two days and <laughs> exactly. Well, they they one of the you know there's there's actually three ways now that that I know of mm-hmm. for in terms of automatic reminders, which is uh, which are uh, you get you can have a, a pop up reminder, you can have an email reminder, and now they've even added SMS for short messaging service. Right, so you can get texts of upcoming events. One of the cool. Uh, um, add-ons within labs they have a next meeting module so you could be sitting there in your calendar and a little window pops up on the right not your standard pop-up but it would it would just give you a kind of a mini days view you can be kind of in the monthly view but it would give you a cool new window to really give you a, a, a reminder a good visual reminder of what's coming up and for me that's important because i can't tell you i'm embarrassed to say i've missed a few meetings i want stuff runs over the the pop-up has has come up and dismissed 
or the email. I'm not checking my email, and boom, I'm 10 minutes late for a meeting. It's like, oh my god, okay, so, you know, I have to apologize with my tail tucked. Right. So, but this this new this it's called um, next meeting module. You should really check no, that. The text out. message thing's cool because I mean now everybody has a phone on them 24 seven basically. So. Absolutely. I Absolutely. noticed a lot of. Sorry, to get to, not to get off Google, but Please. I mean, a lot of companies are using uh, text messaging when it comes to just alerts and reminders and, you know, doctors, everything. It's, yeah. it's, just, it's so convenient. That's it, good that Google uses it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's, it's up to you whether you want to use it, you know, you can, so you don't have to. But, yes, it's a choice. Um, I, I happen to use all three because <laughs> I run around with a chick with my head cut off. Um, you can, as I say, you can share calendars. You can share the details of the calendar. Um, keep it. You can make private. You can add specific people to manage the calendars. You know, trusted people. Um, there's ways, as I mentioned, to block spam. Um, what else? Uh, how about, let's see. I'm going to talk about more of these advanced tools and tips because I think many people already use it. But here's here are some things that I found in my research, and some of them I use, some of them I haven't tried yet. Um, you can have advanced tools within labs called multiple time zones. Say you're doing business abroad. And you don't know what time it is, say, in Barcelona or London. Right? And, but, so it would, you can have a, a visual cue right there of, of showing uh, what time it really is in, with, uh, in that specific region for that person. So you don't have to sit and guess and then go back and forth and do n- new searches, right, to tr- try to figure out a time that works for everyone. Um, you can have a daily agenda. Which is that that comes automatic, but it's kind of cool. You can get email or text message to daily agenda. What's happening that day? So you, again, you wake up. You know, you shouldn't be looking at your phone. You should at least grab a cup of coffee first. Mm-hmm. But if you are one of these people that grabbed your phone, you can quickly check your daily agenda if you've got an early meeting. Um, I mentioned the SMS reminders. I mentioned the let's see next meeting, a voice search. Um, Google now because they're scared to death of Siri have not only created the mobile voice search, but has created a desktop version. I don't know if you've ever gone to Google, but you will see a little tiny microphone in there that says, say, okay, Google. And you, you can prompt yourself to, to search your calendar, say you don't have time or you're on the road, you know, with your hands free, of course, you're not driving with, with your phone in your hand. Uh, you can do voice search for your calendar events. Um, quick ads. There's a re- the little uh, kind of an unknown tool. You can do a quick ad to your calendar. Uh, there's a little teeny red arrow next to your create event button that will, all, instead of filling out everything you need to fill out typically for a calendar, you can just do a quick ad. Pretty handy. Uh, for those of you who are rolling their eyes and are just complete microsurfs and hate Google, well, let me tell you, you know, I think you're missing out um, simply by the fact that there are, you know, Google is an open source company, whereas Microsoft is not, meaning far more people develop open source technologies than do uh, people at Microsoft. Everyone knows it. Not I, not everybody wants I to. I got to ask you what's yeah. op- what is open source? Mean? Open source means the world owns the rights to develop code. Okay? Mm-hmm. So Microsoft, you can't just go to Microsoft and develop Microsoft's software, right? You've got to get approvals and all that. Well, a, a perfect example is the these modules I've talked about for these add-ons. People can write and submit immediately knowing open source technology. So it, it, I mean it's like not even close. I don't know the exact numbers, but I would guess it's like a thousand to one. You know how many people would be able to. Software is just better because so many more people touch it, and it's more secure. And and so when it comes to the web, Microsoft owns a teens, teensy part of the web. Open source owns the rest. So Google, Facebook, Twitter, all these giant companies are open source based technologies. Okay. So. Um, so anyway, my point was you can sync your calendar to your Outlook, your Google calendar to your Outlook. There are tools available that you can do that. Um, you can have a weather forecaster. Pretty pretty awesome. Extra info. Uh, there's an extra info built in so that you can find out, you know, say, international holidays and all the rest of that. Well, I think we're getting close to the end of the show. So much more to talk about. Maybe I'll add it in uh, at a later date. Um, but let me talk about leave you with this thought use google calendar to to share your calendar and make your company more efficient next week i'm going to go over google docs also part of the google calendar system Uh, if you ever want to find me or the show uh, please go to podcast.daveworks.net and as i said next week we will be talking about google docs we'll probably break that down into an entire series so I hope, to, I hope this was helpful, and I hope to see you all next week. Brad, thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. 
from vacuum tubes to smartphone apps and everywhere in between. We've been with you all the way. We are the voice of the foothills. AM 950, KAHI Auburn.